Hey guys, welcome back to Modern Golf, where we talk about mostly golf, but a lot of other things sprinkled in. Today we're talking about how to dominate your yard, um, at least get your grass in order so the HOA doesn't come after you. So I want to give you kind of a background of uh, this yard, kind of what we do annually, and then what we've done in the last couple of years. So we built this house uh, about 10 years or so ago. Um, we had really nothing here but just some uh, very cheap and um, not high quality uh, landscape grass seed. So probably year one, I think I threw down Black Beauty for most of the yard and it was a very thick, if you're not familiar with Black Beauty, it's a very thick um, grass blade. Uh, I think it's a version of it's a version of fescue. I just don't know which ones, and I'm, I'm sure they do their own thing, so it's not really one that you can go out and find somewhere. Um, but the last few years, and I'll post pictures up here, um, I've had some issues with, uh, some people say it's bent grass around here, some say it's poa. Uh, to me, it looks like it's poa. It pulls up super thin, but they're super easy, so I'm not really sure what it is. So I really had a big renovation last year um, where basically ripped out my entire front yard and use uh, Pete's GCI tall turf type fescue um, and also some Kentucky bluegrass and really overseeded uh, heavily, I shouldn't say overseeded, heavily seeded the front yard as well as overseeded uh, the backyard. And so just kind of want to walk you through and how I dominate my neighbor's uh, yard and kind of what I do, I don't say differently, but you know, what do I do on an annual basis? So once the grass seed kind of got put in place last year, I really didn't do a ton. That was last September. Um, it came in very significantly. I was really surprised. I talked to Pete uh, a number of times about uh, really in the first two weeks, I didn't get a lot of germination. I was really surprised. Um, did everything I've always done. And I don't have irrigation here, so I just use a sprinkler system with timers uh, to get it situated. Um, but really from week two to about week four or five, I really saw it completely uh, fill in. And the picture I'll post here is one that I took the end of last, uh, really last summer, last spring, or sorry, last fall of how it looked once it was seeded. Um, and so this year, and what I've done on an annual basis is I go through a process probably starting mid-August. Um, the thatching, aerating, all those things. So I also use liquid aerate, which helps. I use some of the biochemicals and stimulants, um, which certainly helps. But I also have a lawn service that comes does chemicals. I'm just not a huge fan uh, of dealing with chemicals um, routinely like that. And, and I'm not an expert. You know, I let those guys kind of do. And so here locally, we have a great guy, this local guy that does really good work uh, with chemicals. So what do I do differently than everybody else? Um, again, I don't have an irrigation system, so I rarely water. Um, but one of the reasons I use Pete's turf type tall fescue was my front yard was all Kentucky blue, or my whole yard was all Kentucky blue. And then last summer was really warm, and the summer before was really warm. We, I think we had, I'm in northern Ohio, so I think we had, I don't know, it was 15 days or something last year, over 90, um, and everybody and their grandmother was watering all day, every day. And it just got to a point where, man, do I want to spend thousands of dollars to water my grass to keep it alive? Um, and some people tell you, hey, let it go dormant, and then it'll come back. But I can tell you I've seen it uh, just in my neighborhood here that people have let their grass go dormant from the heat um, or even out around their driveways or sidewalks, and it doesn't come back. Um, and they're literally out replanting grass seed in the spring or fall. So... Fast forward to this year, uh, my normal routine is um, I keep my grass cut really high. Uh, and I have a Skag. I've had Xmark and Toro uh, commercial 30-inch mowers. It kind of seems to be the best situation for me. I had a Skag Zero Turn a few years ago, and it just was my backyard uh, slope is about 40 degrees in some spots. And it's just when it gets wet, that thing is like jet skiing. I mean, you're literally sliding down the hill. And I didn't want to be one of those guys who ended up on the news um, that killed himself or drove into the pond or had the thing tip over on him. So 
I normally use a, a, a commercial grade 30 inch mower. Uh, currently I've had a Skag SFC30 and I'll show you pictures of it here. And I did a review of it earlier in the year. Um, and I really, really like this mower. Uh, it goes from, I think basically, uh, you can't cut it under two inches. Maybe you can, but you gotta take plates off. From two inches to about five inches, I normally cut mine around four and a half. Uh, at the beginning of the year, it's probably two and a half, and then it goes up to three. And probably by June, July, I'm at four and a half, and I've cut it at five, uh, depending on uh, the rain frequency or what have you. So I keep my grass super tall. Um, and I know some people say, you know, it, it bends over, it's bad for it. I don't really see that. Um, and I also side discharge. I'm not a bagging guy. Uh, I have a side discharge flap on this one I have for all of them. I don't um, mulch it. I literally just side discharge everything. And so that leads me to my grass normally looks really good. Um, April, May, June, July, it starts to look a little beat up. Um, and I can start to see that the non-collection of the grass seems to um, do something to it. So I know by mid-August, late August, I have to dethatch, aerate, and all that stuff. So just wanted to kind of walk you through, I know this has been a long introduction, I'll walk you through my process of what I do every fall to kind of really help dominate the grass, and again, without irrigation. I'm one of the few people in my neighborhood who don't have irrigation. Um, and what I find, what I kind of laugh at, is all my neighbors have irrigation, and they run it six minutes, you know, for all their zones, and they're puzzled on why their grass has all kinds of issues. You know, if I was to, you know, use an irrigation system, I would probably do it once or twice a week heavily um, and let it, without rain, and then let it um, kind of soak into the roots. But, so every fall, I'd say fall, summer, it's kind of like, uh, I have this epiphany, not epiphany, but I have to go through this process of um, really destroying my lawn to make it look better. And it, and it kind of hurts because I have one of the nicest looking lawns around, and then all of a sudden you literally destroy. And I've had other neighbors tell me, their wives will come home and tell them, oh, he's out destroying his yard again. So my process is pretty simple. Um, the first thing I do is try to dethatch. And by dethatching, I try to cut my grass a little shorter. I don't scalp it. I know some people will tell you, scalp it down to an inch and a half, and then uh, dethatch. And I don't do that for a number of reasons. One is I don't have to destroy my yard. Um, I don't have to get down to every last speck of uh, material, let's say, when I dethatch. So I cut it, let's say if I'm normally at four or four and a half, I cut it about three, two and a half. I don't really scalp it. Um, so I go through the process of doing that. I cut it low and then I will have, and I have, I'll show you a picture here of a Honda little cultivator that has a uh, dethatching kit that I bought a number of years ago. I had used the green power uh, and those electric uh, dethatchers, and I just had a nightmare experience. It was just multiple, multiple extension cords and just a lot of back and forth, um, and I just didn't like it. So I went out and bought a gas-powered one, I think three, four years ago, and it's been great. I think it was 600 bucks, something like that, and it, I've used it once or twice every year. It also has an aerating kit, but the aerating kit sucks on it. I mean, you're just poking tiny little holes. You're not getting really much out of it. I guess it's better than nothing, but it's not great. Um, so I go through my yard, and I'll show you pictures here. Um, one pass looks like this, and you'll see a picture above it here. Um, and, and I know guy, a lot of people tell you when you dethatch, then go over with your lawnmower and pick up all the things. I don't do that. Um, so I have a, a steel BR800 uh, leaf blower that I find a thousand times easier to just blow the debris either in a pile or off somewhere. Um, and you'll see some pictures here of that versus literally cutting the grass multiple times. And it, the reason I do it is because it was literally wearing me out. Um, and I didn't really see much of a difference. Um, so the last couple of years, I've literally uh, dethatch it, let it sit on top, blow it all in a pile. Um, and then I will re-thatch, re-dethatch, I should say, um, in, in a different pattern. And so usually the front, like the, the front this year I did, um, I want to say two... Uh, different directions. And the backyard, I did the same, two different directions. My backyard is obviously significantly larger. It's about 8,000, 8,500 square feet of grass um, and severely sloped. So it's, it's a workout. And that's why I don't like to go up and down and cut the grass 55 times. So go through that process. Um, and I'll show you some pictures here of kind of the after of what it looked like for me um, 
once I dethatch. So I dethatch, blow it, then I will, when I'm all done with the multiple angles, uh, I will then do a, a, a shorter cut, uh, you know, three inches, th two and a half inches, and then I'll leave it. And then about three, four days later, uh, I will have it aerated. Either I will do it or I'll have someone come out and do it. And then I leave the plugs there. And then probably immediately, if that not that day, the next day or two, um, I overseed. And I have still use Pete's uh, GCI turf, uh, turf type tall fescue that I overseed with. And I also put down a little bit, um, not a ton of, I'll put down some fertilizer, not heavy, uh, just a little bit to kind of get two things going. Uh, one is the, the grass has been beat to death in the last couple of weeks between the heat uh, and dethatching and aerating, and then certainly to kind of help the grass grow. And so long story short, it takes me from probably Labor Day to early October before it really looks ideal again. Um, and it's funny between the new seed and um, what's coming in, it, my grass, like most people should, it looks phenomenal in October. Uh, and then it rains all the time. Uh, and then the grass is as green as can be. So some little hints that I do, you know, if you're gonna overseed in an area that's thin, um, buy yourself a timer or two. Uh, I have one that has four zones that you can plug into your uh, spigot or uh, whatever you use. And I, my neighbor, I just helped him do it maybe two months ago, right around Labor Day. And uh, he thought I was crazy. I said, do five, six minutes of time, four or five times a day. And his grass sprouted and came up and germinated in five days. And, and it looks beautiful. He used a uh, wasn't a turf type tall fescue. He wanted more of a Kentucky blue slash rye grass. Uh, the, the rye obviously pops first. The, the Kentucky blue just came up maybe a week or so ago, but looking good. Um, so what I do th go through this process every year, um, fortunately, unfortunately, and then when the spring comes around, uh, I will cut my grass again in the same methods. I have tried to. Um, bag my grass at some point um, and becomes much more of a problematic situation. I, I've tried, two years ago, I tried to keep my grass shorter before I used Pete's product. I cut it at three inches and it, it was just the hottest summers and it just didn't last. So if summer stays cool, this next summer, I will probably try to keep Pete's uh, GCI right around three and a half inches versus the four and a half this year and see how it does. Um, but so, so sim some simple little tricks that I do, obviously keep the grass mowed higher. Um, water, if you don't, if you're not getting rain, water just once a week, not every day for 10 minutes, you're just going backwards. Uh, obviously water in the morning as much as you can uh, versus the afternoon at the end of the day. Uh, I see so much fungus and bacteria will grow uh, as the wa people who water late at night, uh, you know, you get mushrooms and then you get real, real problems. Um, but just wanted you guys to kind of see the process I go through every spring, every fall of um, keeping the grass done a certain way. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting. I love watching other people do it. But so at least you get an idea of kind of what I go through to help kind of dominate my yard uh, between myself and my neighbors. And again, I'm the only one of the only ones who don't have irrigation. Uh, so anyway, just want to kind of give you a, a rundown of what I go through and how we keep it. Um, lush and looking green, dark green every year. So big thanks to Pete at GCI from a couple years ago for helping me with this grass seed and really um, taking my grass to the next level. Um, and certainly I'll make a list of all the tools we use uh, to do the, I call it a refresh every fall, but you know, it's a process of dethatching and aerating. But if there's anything you guys want to see with this, let me know any questions, concerns, how I do it, what we do differently. Uh, certainly leave me in the comments, uh, and if not, we will talk with you guys soon. Thanks, guys. See you soon.